Hello guys, this is Just Some Techie, and Apple recently released their public beta of macOS Tahoe, also known as macOS 26. It brings a beautiful liquid glass redesign, more continuity features from the iPhone, such as the phone app, live activities, call screening, and hold assist, a massive update to Spotlight that lets you perform multiple actions within it, journal app from iOS is here, the new games app and game overlay, and so much more for the swan song to the last remaining Intel Max it supports. This is my first time using a beta of any Apple OS, so I'm genuinely excited to see what macOS Tahoe has to offer. Starting with the installation, the beta only took around 15 minutes to download and the same time to install. For reference, I'm using a base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and this is my battery health going into this beta. Upon booting up, I was greeted with this sleek welcome animation with the liquid glass and seeing liquid glass firsthand on my device is absolutely stunning. It takes notes from iOS with the customization of the app icons. You can choose between light clear or dark clear liquid glass, as well as tinted icons either in dark mode or light mode. It is under the appearance tab in system settings. Whether you want a specific color theme across your Mac, or want that clean glassy aesthetic, you have more options for customization. Now let's talk about the new Spotlight Search. It's gotten some major upgrades. You can now assign quick keys to actions like sending messages or emails. That said, I ran into some early bugs. After assigning a quick key, Spotlight froze, and no matter what I tried, it wouldn't close until I restarted my Mac. I also noticed that clipboard history didn't work, even though the feature was enabled in settings. So yes, it's still a beta, and bugs are expected. But when it works, Spotlight is honestly incredible in what it can do now. Apple has introduced a new games app and game overlay in macOS Tahoe. The initial landing page doesn't seem to load for me upon opening it, but it did seem to work when launching it a few days later. Game overlay doesn't offer a ton versus other gaming overlays. I wasn't able to figure out the shortcut to access it, other than clicking the controller icon on the menu bar. No performance metrics either, it mostly only detects games you've downloaded on iOS or iPadOS, and it can detect Steam games you've played on your Mac. But otherwise it's down to Apple Arcade titles, and other App Store titles mostly. It could always change in later betas, and the final release of Tahoe. Moving on to the phone app, yes, you can manually dial a phone number in the app, which I mean, you expect at the very least. There is a button to change contact posters, but it didn't work for me, even on saved contacts. To actually personalize them, I had to go in and edit the contact directly. Phone call quality I didn't test, but I have used my MacBook to answer a call before, and it sounded just fine. I also didn't have an opportunity to test call screening or hold assist, so apologies if you wanted to see them in action. Since it still relies on your iPhone, the dedicated phone app doesn't really add any new functionality, but it does make the whole process cleaner and easier. And hey, who knows, maybe we'll see MacBooks with cellular options someday, like the iPad Pro or Apple Watch. Another app that's now on macOS without a ton of changes is the Journal app. Admittedly, I don't use the app a ton but it's still a nice app to have when you need it. You can add voice memos, photos, location, etc. with this app. You can lock the journal app after a set amount of time. Not a ton to say about it, but an app worth giving a shot if you haven't already done so on iOS. Lastly, iMessage gets some good updates. You can now have a background in an iMessage conversation or group chat, and even create one with Apple Intelligence be able to do polls, the option to auto-translate messages for a contact, live typing indicators and group chats, and RCS support will eventually be added later in macOS Tahoe's lifespan. Battery life for me with this public beta I didn't notice a big change versus Sequoia. Overall, the bugs I encountered were that Spotlight Quick Keys bug and the changing contact posters button not working. Keep in mind, this is still a beta, and things can change before the final release of macOS Tahoe in September. I don't recommend installing a beta if it's a device you daily drive and rely on every day. That goes for all of Apple's products. Things can break or not work, and in general, there's more risk versus an official release. All in all, macOS Tahoe is shaping up to be a fantastic update for macOS users. It's becoming more parody to iOS for apps and features. The liquid glass redesign gives everything a fresh new look, although rest in peace Mickey Mouse cursor, an even better spotlight search, and more that I wasn't able to show, or in general had smaller changes. But what do you guys like about macOS Tahoe? Do you like this liquid glass redesign Apple is implementing across all their OS's? Do you think they could have done more of this update? Let me know down below. I'm just some techie, catch you on the next one. See you then.